Hello adventurers! In this video, I'll be sharing with you the best night safari itinerary. If you don't want to waste time queuing and want to see all of the animals, this itinerary is perfect for you. Let's begin! From an overview perspective, there are essentially three things that you can do in the night safari. The walking trails, creature of the night animal show, and the tram ride. Now, let's get started with our itinerary. Head to the night safari entrance by 6.30pm. Actually, it opens at 7, but sometimes it opens early. So we won't say no to extra time. First, we'll be doing the walking trail, which actually consists of four main trails. In total, it's a one-hour point-to-point walking route along many of the animal exhibits. The first time I was on a walking trail, I was very sad. My animal show was about to start in 30 minutes, but I decided to start walking the trail. Just as I was enjoying my walk, I had to turn back to catch my show. To fully enjoy the walking trail, you need to commit the next one hour just to do the walk. Preferably, you also want to clear your bladder because there are only toilets at the start and midpoint of the trail. Or maybe you can just answer nature's call in between the trees in the dark. Probably no one will see you, but <laughs> no, I don't recommend that. We'll start from the fish and cat trail and then go clockwise. We're starting with the walk first because we want to utilize the remaining sunlight to help us spot the animals before it gets too dark. Just compare this view and this view. Which one is easier for you to see things? And here are the stars of the fishing cat trail. The fishing cat himself, the gharials, the giant anteater, Brazilian porcupine, striped hyenas, maint wolf, and this tiny adorable armadillos. Further in, you'll find the explorer's outpost. This is actually an animal presentation area. Sometimes, the zookeepers will come here and show off their animals. However, their schedule is not fixed, so if they are not there, we'll just skip it. After crossing the road, we'll reach the leopard trail, which is a little bit confusing to walk, but don't worry, we'll keep it simple. Just stick to the left, we'll cover the bigger loop first. The special attractions here are the enclosures of the civet and the flying fox. They are very worthwhile to visit because you're guaranteed to see the animals there. At this point, it'll be a lot darker than when you first started and you'll start to feel the pain of low visibility at night. The areas inside the enclosures are better lit and with the keeper around, the animals are more active and visible. That's why you'll have a much better time watching the animals in these enclosures. After the civet enclosure, find the lion's lookout. Make sure you take a good look at the lions. This will be important later. Now, here is the midpoint where you can find the toilets. After this point, there will be no more toilets until the end of the trail. My favorite part of the leopard trail is the Indian rhino. Just look at this majestic beast. He's got such a badass armor. You can actually join the rhino feeding session, but I think watching is already cool enough. You'll also find a few clouded leopard exhibits along the trail. I tried finding them, but I really couldn't, which gave me a new fear. What if I'm stuck in the middle of a jungle, everything is dark. There's a leopard around, I cannot see him, but he can see me. Now, we're entering the East Lodge Trail. After crossing the road, on your left, you'll find a sloth bear. But it's really dark and it's black color, so you might have trouble finding him. The coolest animal here is the spotted hyenas. The whole family is so active and so visible. I find them to be the most fun to watch here. It also feels like they can just hop over the gap and eat you up, you know? Also, remember the lions from just now? I hope you took a good look because this is where I learned that there are two types of lions in the world. I've always thought that lions come from Africa. These are the ones you're seeing right now. The lions that we saw before are Asiatic lions that comes from India. There are also white tigers here, but I thought their display window is so small and it's so dark, I didn't really enjoy watching them. If you like watching active animals, this next trail is gonna be a blast. The Tasmanian Devil Trail. At first, the name might be a little scary. Don't worry, there are no devils here, only angels. This trail is named after this red-looking animal that gets its name from the devilish sound that they make. Just take a listen. If I go to the forest and I hear this sound at night, I'll leave and I'll never come back. Actually, they're quite cute. This trail also has very unique caves displaying many cave-dwelling animals. I was so mind-blown by this scorpion that glows in UV light. Finishing the walking trail should take you about one to one and a half hours, after which you'll find yourself back almost at where you started. 
Now, we're just in time for the 8.30 p.m. animal show at the amphitheater. But wait, to watch the animal show, we need to book our seats. Before we even reach the zoo, we need to go to this website and book our seats for the 8.30 p.m. show. Don't be like me, I thought I could just walk in. On my first visit, I got turned away and actually missed my show. Here, I'll show you some snippets of the show so you'll know what you're getting yourself into. Personally, I recommend watching for these three reasons. Number one, it's fantastic to see so many of the nocturnal animals in one sitting. After walking the whole walking trail and squinting into the dark, having the animals to just show up in front of you is really very welcoming. Number two, I really like the show format and the animal tricks are really cool. I can feel that the animals and the keepers have a great working relationship because at one point of the show, Actually, the owl didn't want to do the trick, but the keeper didn't force it to. It's very interesting to witness that the animals are doing the tricks out of their partnership with the keeper rather than out of fear or punishment. It's nice that the animals are very well taken care of. And number three, some of the animals that you see in the Creatures of the Night show cannot be found anywhere else in the zoo. So you have to come and watch if you want to see all the animals. By the way, if you find this video helpful so far, please give it a like so that it can reach more people. Thank you very much. Next, we're gonna catch the rest of the animals on the tram ride. You might have passed by a huge crowd of people queuing for the tram when you walked by earlier on. The queue is crazy long in the early evening. That's why we're only getting onto the tram after we finish our walk and our animal show because by now, the queue should look a little more like this. Just by doing it in the sequence, you already save yourself about 30 minutes to one hour of queuing. The best part is, instead of waiting in line, you will be walking around in the walking trails watching nocturnal animals under the last light of the evening sun. When getting onto the tram, aim for the front car and sit on the right side. These are the best seats in the tram because you want to be in the front to be able to anticipate the incoming animals and based on the route, the more interesting animals will be on the right side of the road. However, do note that the frontmost car are reserved for handicapped guests. For parents who will be bringing strollers for their children, don't worry, there are luggage space in the back of the tram where you can store your strollers. Now, here are some of the best view from the tram that makes me want to see it again. What I really like about the tram is that there are some animals that you cannot see unless you take the tram. 
For example, the elephants, the Malayan tapir, and the deers. As a city boy, it was such a fantastic feeling to drive by herds of grazing deers. Number two, the tram will actually stop at designated spots, giving everyone more time and space to watch and adore the animals. This is a game changer because imagine if the tram just drive by, right? The experience will feel very rushed. Thanks to my tram driver who was very watchful and very observant, we were able to spot the tapir and it was comfortable enough to roam very near to the tram, giving us a very close look of the tapir. I just have one problem with the tram ride. There's an audio guide that's playing in the tram. But the tram itself is so loud and other guests easily just talk over it. I wish there's an option for a visual guide instead, maybe a web page for each of the stop of the animals that we're seeing. Something that I can access on the go and refer to it when I'm on the tram. Monday, hit me up if you want to work on this together. Overall, I think the tram is really worth going, especially if you follow my itinerary and avoid the horrendously long queue. After all that, I don't think you should visit the night safari without also visiting the bird paradise of the Singapore Zoo in the day. So, I'll see you there. Do you want to know why you only see the upper half of my body in this video?